what is going on, my mad people? It's your boy, the Mad Crown on Mad Mane, and I'm here to give you a review on Girls Last Tour, Episode 3. <sighs> Thanks to this episode, it has been confirmed that Chi and you aren't the only living beings on this planet, and of course we all figured that much, but we needed some proof within the show to see that they aren't the only ones, because that would be kind of depressing as heck. However, now that we know that they're not the only ones, it could raise some danger for future episodes, seeing how they um, interacted with this character named Mr. Kanazawa. Because as you can see, they're very cautious of another being. So I guess it's possible they must have some run-ins with other humans that weren't so friendly, unlike Mr. Kanazawa. So now we get to see that in this case. However, thank God Kanazawa is a freaking good guy. And not only that, we also got to understand even more. Like this, this freaking lore of the show has opened up. Like we thought it was this big, but now it got this big now, thanks to this freaking episode. Like, let's just talk about the settings in this episode. The girls have finally made it to the city, and it there's no snow around, so they're finally out of the woods. But however, hearing what Mr. Kanazawa said about the world. Apparently, most of the technology that they were looking at, they didn't even know how to use, and they said it didn't know how to be used for hundreds of years. So, now this opens up new possibilities on what happens in this world, and we might have ourselves a Fallout or Metroid situation now because of how everything is. They just said that they didn't know how to use the technology for hundreds of years, so that means something else happened hundreds of years ago that screwed the world over, and then there were remaining survivors of humanity, but and then again, another war broke out. But this time, with this war that Chi and you went through, they ain't knew how to use most of the technology, they ain't knew how to make good resources. So they were pretty much doing what Fallout did. They were pretty much leeching off the past of past resources in order to survive in their current situation, in their post-apocalyptic world that's driven by war. It also seen how they were trying to cross to the other side of the, of the city and there's this giant long gap at the middle of the road, man. It's just long. And looking how the structure is, it didn't even look like it was an earthquake or anything that caused it. It was like it was made that way. As if it could open and close at any time back in the old days. But this also gives another thing that nature is pretty much destroyed and humans pretty much artificially made more buildings and even roads where it's mechanical. Looking at the edge layers of how the gap was, there was um, pretty much metal metal plates. So that means this was artificially made and it was made open and closed for a certain reason but however that will remain a mystery for us. And also how the tower was. Apparently people didn't know how to use the tower nor they didn't know how to use anything there. They just lived there and scavenged off it. They took what they had and they made their own use for it. But other than that they did not know how to use technology of the old world. So now we have leads up with the question now what happened now a hundred years ago that caused another war to happen in their current situation so this leaves up so many more questions than we already have and it and it, to me i love it i when i heard this I'm like this is pleasing to me because as i said before i love a good story that has amazing lore to it i i'm, I'm a sucker for stories of good lore i like to put things together and find out how things happen but yeah this was definitely a treat for me and not so much for some. Now, going on with the relationship with the new character in the episode, Kamazawa. Um, seeing how you react to him. Pretty much in the first half of this entire episode, you pretty much acted like a guard dog. Every time Kamazawa would even just move, just even to pick up a rock or just turn around, she would immediately just aim at him. Like, she was ready to shoot him down any moment, any chance that she got she was just ready to kill him so yeah she she acts like a guard dog a lot however as time went on in the second half of the episode she started to crack jokes with him and even share food with him which she usually doesn't do she usually you usually isn't the type of person to share food but she's doing it with this guy so you can already tell she's starting to warm up on him and stuff so i like that progression so it's how she is alarmed at all times. 
around people that she don't know, which is very natural. It's a natural human instinct, especially inside a post-apocalyptic world. And we usually do watch these kind of movies and shows and games that's about the apocalypse. There's usually two kinds of people. There are people who like to stay in groups. Power is dangerous and fights can bring any time. And some are very violent. Um, then there's people who like to stay as one person by themselves. They're very intelligent. They don't really like to go to violence. But however, they're not that strong, so they stay by themselves and stay away from danger. But there are those type of two people in the apocalypse. So these two people met with Chi and Yu being the group and Kamazawa being the path of this kind of guy, you know. He does have explosions on him, but he only doesn't make his way around the city because he was making a map. Now this one, now going into the moral of this whole entire episode is pretty much having a thrive to live, a reason to continue to move forward. As in the beginning of the episode, Chi was wondering if they were still alive and if they are surviving, what's the point of living? Where they made Kazawa, where his thrive in living was to create a map around the city and pretty much document it. And that was pretty much it. That was his thrive to live. Some people say that's pretty much a stupid idea. But then again, it couldn't be a smart one, but it's all he has in order to survive, or else he would probably go mad and want to kill himself. And guess what happens? Towards the end, he loses all his work, and of course, just like that, he was ready to give up his life. But however, thanks to him talking to you, saying, if you do lose a meaning and a purpose in life, don't give up, just look for another one. And that's pretty much what's the moral of the story. No matter how many times you lose your meaning or your way, just look for another way to live. That's just all it is. And as you can see, the two main characters, Chi and Yu, don't really have an actual destination or a reason to go there. They just go there because that's where they want to go, and that's it. But this journey is not much of a, like, a mission, but more of just, they're just going anywhere their instincts tell them to go in order to survive, to find food, to find gas and stations, and stuff like that. Well, what's left of the upside joy was them on the, on the elevator, the main main elevator, and how, um, the conversation completely really switch. How um, she was completely scared. She's scared of heights, especially when there's nothing guarding them around, so they could easily tilt and fall. And then how Mr. Kanzo was like, I guess they thought it was a waste of material to use a gate fence. And then as the things started to tilt and he loses his work, then he starts to regret why they make a gate fence. And then of course he says because they thought it was a waste of material. So I like how that switch part it was hilarious. That was a little my little chuckle out of the episode. Then at the end, they part of their ways. So yeah, I did enjoy this episode. Um, we got to know a lot more about their world. That things happened even worse before, hundreds of years ago. So things been going bad for years, man, for centuries. And so now we got to find out what the heck happened. And I am ready, man. I am ready to see. I am looking forward to the next episode. And I hope you guys are too. Because I really like the series. So tell me what you think. What caused this world to be the way it is? What happened hundreds of years ago for mankind to lose its way that badly? To just resort to nothing but violence. So that's the guy for this video. I hope you enjoy it. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be much obliged. This is Dr. Anime. Sign out.